for waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. As you can see, the tank behind me is completely filled. I've got it so that it's ready to turn on. Now, the new line of Red Sea Tanks has a CJ pump that is programmable and fits with the ReefBeat app. I'm going to show you that in a later video, but the pump that I've got on here now is my old CJ Synchra SDC. So when I turn on the power, the pump is going to go ahead and power itself up. And once it's up and running, I'm going to go ahead and start connecting everything to the ReefBeat app. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when I turned everything on a minute ago, you might have heard that loud beep. That's not any of the Red Sea equipment. That is actually the innovative marine heater I have. That's just an alarm letting me know that it had been turned off and was turning on. Something interesting about the innovative marine helio heater is that it has a high and a low alarm that you can set on there along with setting the temperature, which I'll be doing shortly. But for now, let's go ahead and set up everything on the Reef Beat app. Let me show you how it works. Okay, first things first, make sure that the Reef Beat app is downloaded. This is what it looks like. Go ahead and open that. All right, it's pretty simple and straightforward. It says add a device. So go ahead and select that. We're gonna start with the lights first. And since this is a Reef LED 90, that's what I'm gonna select. All right, make sure the device is connected to power, which it is. There's a connection button that we need to press for five seconds on the back of the light. It's a little um, soft rubbery covered button. So go ahead and press that. Wait till the lights are flashing. All right. Lights are flashing. Then it wants us to go into the settings for the Wi-Fi. All right, and it's showing up the RS LED 90. Go ahead and select that and go back to the Reef Beat screen. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. Success. We are connected to the light. I'm gonna go ahead and click next again. Now this is the screen where it's gonna ask you to connect the device to your home internet. So go ahead and select the correct one. All right, we're connecting to the online services. Almost there. And just like that, we have light. All right, so this new screen that has just popped up, um, it has the name of the light. So if you tap that little center field, it'll allow you to edit. So I'm gonna add a space right here. And since this is the light on the right side of my tank, I'm gonna go ahead and type in right. That way, if it pops up, I know which device it's talking about. All right. Oh. Okay, so now I have connected the second light, which is the one on the left-hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and make that notation. Now, if you are reading this, it's gonna tell you that both of these lights are now grouped. You can ungroup them in the device manager, but it's kind of nice if you make changes, um, they're considered to be grouped together. All right, now it gives you all of the different options that you can choose. If you select this, it lets you do a schedule. And then it even lets you browse the library of different lighting setups. A whole bunch of different options that they have. It's pretty impressive. So if we want to test this, go ahead and hit play. 
on top. And look at that. And that's what a cycle would look like. All right, I like this one. So if you've decided that this is the one you want, make sure to hit select up in the top right and that will apply it. Once you bring back to the screen, hit apply. I just wanna show you guys what it looks like. All right, now if you want to adjust things manually, you can come in and adjust each of these settings for the blue and the white and the moonlight. You can even set up a lunar cycle, um, you know, an acclimation setup, all sorts of different options that you have under the lights. So let's go back. So this is our home, this button down here in the bottom left, but we need to add some more devices. So let's go ahead and click device manager. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and connect to the reef wave. So hit that plus button up at the top. And since I have the 25, I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. All right, now we are going to press the mode until it is flashing. So this guy. All right, it's flashing. So we're gonna press this again multiple times until we get to this one down here with the little reef beat logo. And hold. All right, now we're gonna hit next. The device is already connected to power, but if you look on the bottom towards the left-hand side, there's a little rubber button. Go ahead and depress that until the light flashes about five seconds. All right, now it's our cue to open up our Wi-Fi settings. And the reef wave that we're looking for is the 10781. And I'm gonna go back to the settings and hit next. All right, it's connected. Now this is the step it's gonna ask us to connect to the home internet. Okay, now that we have our reef wave connected, it brings us back to this home screen. So you can see at the top that my LEDs are already connected. Um, the day is kind of getting to an end, so you can see that we're at 10% moonlight, but let's go ahead and take a look at that reef wave that is connected. So you can see already on the home screen that it's at 40%. If you tap that, it pulls up this screen. So let's go ahead and tap this button up at the top with the big red bar. All right, now this tells us again what our max flow is on that dial if you want. You could tap and reverse the flow. It changes the percentage. I'll put that back the way it was. Now, if you make any changes, make sure um, this little button up top, it says save as, you're gonna have to select that. I don't wanna change it because I like how it is, but I wanna show you some of the different settings. So another thing, if you go back, you select that schedule. This allows you to set a schedule of what the reef waves are doing. And if you're not sure, you can always browse their library. So click that button down at the bottom and it gives you a whole library full of wave patterns, very similar to the different lighting schedules that we saw for the LEDs. And it even towards the end allows you to create your own schedule and let you customize stuff. So if for example, you wanted to change the wave pattern to the wave or the step wave. So make sure that this box is highlighted. Click select up top. Yes, I want to replace it. All right, so now you're back at the screen. Go ahead and click apply. Give it a minute. Okay, and now we are back in the reef wave um, display. So you can see that it's changed that. It's running this uh, library setting. And uh, if you want to change it, you just go back through that same process and select what you want. Now, if you're done messing around with this, you can click on the home icon down in the bottom left and it brings you back to where everything is. 
Now you see I've got the other Reef Wave still sitting on controller mode. Um, you can go in and change that if you want, or you can have them both on controller um, entirely up to you. Now, something else, if you click on Device Manager down in the bottom, it'll tell you everything that is on the tank that is connected to your device. So eventually, once I get the new skimmer set up and apply um, that to the reef beat, it'll show up here as well as the return pump. So eh, pretty excited to see how this all connects, especially once I have the doser and everything all in, it'll be great to be able to run them from the phone. All right, I hope you have enjoyed getting an inside look at how the Reef Beat app connects to the different pieces of equipment on your tank. I'm really excited to get the skimmer kit installed and set up on the app as well. And don't worry, I'll bring you guys along for that. Okay, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. This has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.